Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, I wanted to start this one off by saying a huge thank you to everybody. We've just passed a hundred subs, which is a pretty big milestone if you're tiny and like me. So uh, thanks everybody for coming out and saying what's up and enjoying some of the stuff that I put out here, even though it is uh, marginal at best. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Y'all are pretty awesome, I have to say. So anyway, we have a Mars window coming up, so we're going to start uh, trying to build something out to go to and hopefully land on Mars. This, if it works, will be our first successful Mars landing, even though we've taken many, 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 many shots at it before. Hopefully this one will be the one that works. Uh, I've got a couple ideas I wanted to play around with, so I'm hoping that they won't be drastically unsuccessful, but uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, I've started out with this one-ton core. It's uh, the compact version of the Surveyor core. It has avionics for up to one ton. I guess I said that already. Anyway, let's get building. So, um, yeah. All right, so, uh, as you can tell, I'm trying to land some sort of glider, or at least something that can glide down and land on Mars. The objective is really to have something that can land in a specific biome and then hopefully take off under its own power and fly to another biome. Now, unfortunately, with even a modest amount of fuel, we're reaching our one-ton limit pretty quickly. So we've got to double up on our control cores and uh, move a couple of things around. Uh, I don't know if that tailplane is going to be effective enough, and asking something to land on wheels in 1.1.3 is asking for disaster. But uh, I'm willing to give it a try because this is just an idea I've kind of wanted to fool around with before, just having something that can hit multiple biomes in a single lander pass, but uh, I guess we'll see how effective it is. We need yet another core just for the heat shield because it just weighs that much, having one that's big enough. Um, yeah, lots of toggling around. We're going to get our action group set up for our radio in and for our boot sequences. Yeah, and more toggling with the weight. We're going to go from two engines to three and only two separatron motors to get rid of that heat shield and get it clear of the lander. All right, and now we can start building out our transfer and hopefully our orbital insertion stage. If we have to do an aero capture, I'm really not that worried about it. I think that heat shield is big enough to cover everything. At least I hope it is. And we're going to go with this plan of adding some lateral ditchable tanks. Um, obviously, because I just feel like it's more efficient. Now we'll pick out a paint scheme for a couple of things here. That's really pretty marginal. And get some orbital science things on the side. Set their action groups. Our action group for our radio in. A couple more lateral tanks just for good measure. I think that ought to do it. All right, well, uh, I can get rid of this. And uh, since this was oh, 110 days, man, that's going to... We're going to have to speed that up. Our window is less than 110 days away. But uh, this will be the first of probably at least two launches that we'll be sending to Mars. A an ambitious project, considering something like this would have been much more at home at Venus with the gliding. But we shall see. Uh, something I've always kind of wanted to attempt. <laughs> if it fails, well, yeah, we're, uh, we're right on track for everything else that we've done so far. So, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Uh, Hope to see you back for the next one. Thanks for hanging out, and until next time, I will uh, see you later.